the Padres finally have their first no-hitter in franchise history. Who do I think has the best chance to throw a no-hitter in this one? Who's your player to watch in this one? Let's go over today's full slate of baseball in today's MLB preview. What's going on, everybody? I hope you're enjoying your day. I certainly am excited to watch a ton of baseball in this one. It's going to be a great day. Uh, it's beautiful outside where I'm at in New York, so w perfect day for baseball. So why don't we just get right into it, of course. Um, I, my weekly awards video is also going to be coming out later tonight. I'm excited about that, so make sure you stick around. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss when every video goes live. So first up uh, on the docket today... We've got the 1-6 Miami Marlins with Trevor Rogers on the mound. Uh, he was my starter to watch a few videos ago. The last time he started, pitched okay. Uh, against the 2-2 two two New York Mets, uh, they won, of course, last night. Uh, De Jacob deGrom was on the mound for the New York Mets. It's always must-watch baseball when Jacob deGrom's on the mound. Uh, by far the best pitcher in baseball right now. And it's not close, and it's amazing to watch. Uh, at one ten Eastern time, the tied for third place. Uh, New York Yankees and Tampa Bay Rays are going at it. Domingo Herman's on the mound for the Yankees. He looks to bounce back from a rough start in his first one. Uh, and then Chris Archer's on the mound for the Tampa Bay Rays, facing the familiar New York Yankees, of course. Um, Archer looks to kind of build on some success he had in Tampa Bay uh, early on in his career. Did not pitch well in his first start, so we'll see if he's able to bounce back in this one against the Yankees. Of course, I'm rooting that he doesn't, but uh, that feels mean of me. Uh, that's just the bias in me. Oops. So, <laughs> at 2.10 Eastern Time, we've got the Seattle Mariners facing off against the 5-2 and two Minnesota Twins. They look great so far this, uh, this season. Yusei Kikuchi's on the mound for the Seattle Mariners. Of course, he's looking to have a career year in this one. He needs it, so he uh, gets his contract picked up by the Mariners again after the offseason. Uh, and then Michael Pineda, big Mike's on the mound for the Minnesota Twins. Uh, we'll see if he's able to pitch well in this one against the Mariners. At 2.15 Eastern Time, we've got the Milwaukee Brewers, uh, who have struggled a little bit out of the gate here against the St. Louis Cardinals, coming in at 5-2. and two. They, of course, do look really good. Adrian Hauser is going to be on the mound for the Milwaukee Brewers, and Carlos Martinez will be on the mound for the St. Louis Cardinals. Uh, should be a good matchup. Hauser pitched well on his first one. And, of course, Carlos Martinez has nasty stuff. The uh, Oakland Athletics finally get their second win of the year. Uh, I think they've won two out of their last three, or maybe... Maybe they've split the last four. I'm not sure. But they have two wins now and seven losses, so it's getting better, maybe. I'm not really sure. But they've got Frankie Montas, who just looked atrocious in his last start. Uh, so he's on the mound for them. He looks to bounce back against Jose Urquidy against the uh, Houston Astros. We will see how that one's going to turn out in this one. Urquidy needs to pitch well for the Astros so they can uh, make a deep playoff run eventually this, uh, this October. 4.05 uh, Eastern Time, we've got Chi-Chi Gonzalez and the Colorado Rockies going up against the San Francisco Giants and Logan Webb. Uh, they both aren't the best pitchers. Of course, they're playing in at AT&T Park. That does help them. Uh, Low-scoring affair in this one, probably, I would imagine. Uh, they don't have the uh, Denver weather to deal with in this one. 6.10 Eastern Time, the Detroit Tigers and Cleveland Indians are back at it again, of course. Uh, they're very familiar with each other. Tarek Skubal will be on the mound for the Detroit Tigers. He looks uh, like a promising young guy for them in the future to build upon, along with Casey Mize. Aaron Savali, another good pitcher that the Indians just seem to churn out all the time. He will be on the mound for the Indians, like I said. Uh, should be a good game. Right now, the Indians look to get above 500, and the Tigers look to not fall any farther behind. Uh, the Chicago Cubs coming in at 4-3, and three, facing off against the Pittsburgh Pirates, of course. Uh, the the Pirates are 1-6. They still just have that one sole victory on the year. Zach Davies, the centerpiece of the U Darvish trade, will be on the mound for the Chicago Cubs. And Mitch Keller, a promising young guy, will be on the mound for the Pittsburgh Pirates. We'll see who's able to pitch better in this one. Of course, the Chicago Cubs have not looked good this year. They're 4-3, and three, but that's because they faced these Pirates. Uh, the Pirates are obviously the Pirates. They, they're not good either way, but we'll see who's able to bounce back in this. 7 5 we've got the tied for first place. Bet you didn't think I was going to say that this year. Boston Red Sox and Baltimore Orioles. Of course, they're just 4-3. and three. It's only been a week. We'll see how it goes. Garrett Richards uh, looked bad in his first start. He's on the mound for the Red Sox. And then Bruce Zimmerman on the mound for these Orioles. We'll see if the Orioles are able to continue their dominance over the Red Sox this year. 7.05 Eastern time. We've got the San Diego Padres, of course, like I said, coming off their first franchise no-hitter. Maybe they can get two in a row. We'll see. Uh, it seems like a tall order. Well, well maybe not. But the Padres are facing off against the Rangers, of course, again in this one. Chris Paddock, the sheriff, on the mound for them. 
Uh, and then Jordan Lyles on the mound for the Texas Rangers looked okay in his first start. So we'll see if the Padres are able to continue their success this year. They are 5-3. and three. The Red Hot American League Western Division leaders, Los Angeles Angels, uh, they are proving me wrong right now. We'll see if they're able to continue their uh, hot streak throughout the rest of the season. Uh, Jose Quintano's on the mound for them. Did not look good in his first start against the Toronto Blue Jays. Steven Matz did look good in his first start. So we'll see if he's able to pitch well against this loaded offense. Uh, they are playing, of course, in Dunedin, Florida, not Tam uh, Toronto, uh, because the border is still closed. The Philadelphia Phillies, uh, they are 5-2. and two. They're still red hot in this one. Uh, 7.20 Eastern time, that game's going on against the Atlanta Braves. Braves are, of course, the home team in this one. Zach Eflin looked fantastic in his first start against these very same Braves. Uh, he's go facing off against Ian Anderson, who also looked good. I'm kind of rooting for Ian Anderson in this one. He's on my fantasy team, of course. I'll show a little bit of bias in these. Uh, I'm just telling you what's going to happen. I'm not saying. Uh, I, I, I'm not afraid to show. Not, I'm not afraid to tell you what I want to happen. Of course, I've been wrong before, but I'm on a little bit of a hot streak uh, in this one. And then the Cincinnati Reds, speaking of hot streaks, are 6-1. and one. They do look really good. Um, Trevor Hoffman. Not Trevor Hoffman. Um... Hoffman, I can't think of this guy's name. Jeff Hoffman, wow. Not Trevor Hoffman, no relation, I believe. Uh, Jeff Hoffman will be on the mound for the Cincinnati Reds. He had to get out of Colorado, of course, to save his career, like most pitchers. He'll be facing R. Smith and the Arizona Diamondbacks. I don't know much about Smith, I'll be honest with you. Uh, the Diamondbacks don't look great. They're 2-6. and six. Of course, the, the Reds are red hot, pun intended. At 9:10 Eastern Time, the last game of of the slates, the Washington Nationals have everybody's favorite pitcher TBD on the mound at the time I'm recording this. They have not announced that yet. Against the six and two Los Angeles Dodgers, uh, Julio Urias will be on the mound for the Dodgers. He looked good in his first start. Uh, the Dodgers rotation bullpen, all of it's disgusting. They're just they're not fair as a team. Uh, and then postponed in this one right before I started recording this. The Kansas City Royals and the Chicago White Sox, both teams are 500. Uh, that game is going to be made up on May 14th in their next series. Now, I've got a pitcher to watch in this one. I said who's got the best chance to throw a no-hitter today. Um, I think, obviously, Jacob DeGrom is on the mound, so he has the best chance to throw a no-hitter. I mean, it's Jacob DeGrom. On any given day, he can be so dominant that he does throw a no-hitter especially against the Marlins, who've struggled offensively this year. But for an important start, I think it's Chris Paddock. Um, Jacob DeGrom's got the best chance to throw a no-hitter, but Chris Paddock needs, needs to do well. Um, he's looked okay. He, a couple years ago, of course, he had that great season for the Padres. But next year, Chris Paddock could be out of a rotation spot. Denilson Lamette is disgusting once he comes back healthy. Mike Clevenger is going to be back next year. Of course, Blake Snell and you Darvish. Um, Mackenzie Gore is on the way. And, of course, Joe Musgrove just threw that no-hitter yesterday. So Chris Paddock could be used as a trade piece if he doesn't get, his, get it together. Uh, so he's going to look to pitch well, especially against this Texas Rangers offense. Kind of prove to San Diego and their fans that he's still the sheriff. He can still pitch well. Um, of course, he's not my pick to, pick and, to throw a no-hitter, uh, but he does need to have a good start in this one. And then apparently Tyler Naquin is the best player ever. Uh, he leads the league with five home runs, 14 RBIs, has just seven hits. Well, I shouldn't say just, has seven hits on the year. Uh, which isn't bad, but five of them are just absolute nukes. Uh, he's been red hot since he left Cincinnati. Or sorry, he plays for Cincinnati now. He's been red hot since he's left Cleveland, Ohio, different Ohio City. Um, so we'll see if he's able to continue his success in this one, especially against uh, the Diamondbacks. He homered again yesterday. His teammate Nick Castellanos uh, leads the league in OPS still. Apparently Tyler Naquin, maybe Nick Castellanos rubbed off on Tyler Naquin, or Tyler Naquin just loves the... Uh, can-do attitude of Nick Castellanos right now, but he looks absolutely filthy. So we'll see if he continues his success in this one. Um, right now, my team to watch, I've got the... Uh, I think i got to go with the uh, Chicago Cubs. Yes, they're 4-3. and three. Uh, They're above 500. They beat the Pirates. But they've played the Pirates a lot this year already. They're only 4-3. and three, And um, their offense has been atrocious. A uh, stack came out a couple days ago. This might not be true anymore, but... Pitchers in Major League Baseball were hitting better than the hitters for the Chicago Cubs. The Cubs need to get it together as an offense. They struggled last year. They're starting out bad this year. Figure it out, Cubs. I have faith in you, but I'm starting to lose it. The Reds look nasty. The Brewers are good. The Cardinals look nasty. 
The Cubs could be a fourth place team pretty easily in this one. Of course, it's going to be a just a crapshoot division, but they need to get it together for sure. Uh, or their their contention window is about to close on them very quickly. Guys, that's going to do it for me. I hope you enjoy this one. Of course, like I said, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you're new. Helps me out a ton. Make sure you stick around for my MLB Weekly Awards video coming out later tonight. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I appreciate all of you again. Peace out.